Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome to Ask Brian Chow. Today, we will continue with our e-invoice sharing sessions and the topic will be 51 fields in e-invoice. Originally, there are 53 fields required in e-invoice, but after LHDN launched the latest e-invoice guideline 2.1 and also e-invoice specific guideline 1.1, the required fields reduced to 51 fields. Some of them is optional. Let's go through one by one. Basically, the 51 fields required for e-invoice separate into nine categories. The first category will be parties. In e-invoice, we require the supplier's name and also the buyer's name. Second category, supplier's details. The supplier team number, which is the tax identification number, where you can get it from your My Tax Portal. Supplier registration number. Some people may ask me, why supplier registration number can be my card? Because sometimes you may need to do self bill invoice, which we will discuss in later topic. Supplier SST registration number, if the supplier is a SST registrant. Supplier tourism tax registration number, it is mandatory for tourism tax registrant. Supplier's email, supplier's MSIC code, you can get it from your tax agent. Supplier's business activity, we have buyer's details, buyer's TIN number, buyer's registration number, IC or passport, buyer's SST registration number, mandatory for SST registrant, buyer's email, address. So we need the supplier address and also buyer's address. Contact number, we need the supplier's contact number and also buyer's contact number. For invoice details, we have e-invoice version, whether it's 1.0, 2.0. E-invoice type, if you can remember, there are four types of e-invoice. Invoice, credit note, debit note, and also refund note. E-invoice code or number, original e-invoice reference number. This only applicable if you do credit note, debit note, or refund note, which need to refer back to a original invoice number. E-invoice date and time. Now, this one you need to take note because for date and time of issuance of the e-invoice, it need to be the current date and time, which means you no longer allowed to backdate your invoice or set your invoice date to a future date. I know many people doing this. It's time for you to change this SOP. Date and time of validations, it need to be the same date with your e-invoice date. Issuer digital signature is a list of numbers. Invoice currency code, RM. If you are selling to an overseas customer, then you may change the currency code. As well, you need to insert the currency exchange rate because it is applicable in this situation. Frequency of billing. Sometimes some company will do monthly billing or even yearly billing. Then you need to put in the billing cycle. And when you put in the billing cycle, you need to put in the billing period from when to when. Unique ID number. This unique number will be assigned by IRB upon validation of the e-invoice. It's just like an approval code. We have the product or service category. Classifications, description of your product or service, unit price, tax type, if your product or service involves sales tax, service tax, and so on. Tax rate, tax amount, details of tax exemptions, the exemption amount, and also subtotal. Total excluding tax, total including tax, quantity, where applicable, measurement, where applicable. Measurement is just like whether it's a box, it's a unit, or it's a piece, and so on. Discount rate, if you give discount, you need to put in, and the discount amount. Payment info is totally optional, but basically, if you want to put in, you need to put in the payment mode, whether it's through cash or bank transfer, credit card, and so on. Supplier's bank account number, payment terms, payment amount, payment date, payment reference number, and bill of reference number. This is a bit difficult because at the time for you to prepare the invoice, normally you will not know the payment condition. So that's why all this is optional. But will this be a compulsory in the future? Let's follow the updates. Basically, your e-invoice will look something like this. There is a QR code. All your validated e-invoice must have a QR code. Your customer or whoever who have this invoice, they can scan the QR code and get the invoice details through my invoice portal. One more thing I need to highlight to you is during API verifications, that means when your software integrate with my tax portal for verification of your e-invoice, one of the very major checking will be the format, which is the document submitted match the current version structure. The version of e-invoice structure will keep on changing, just like GST. If you are using an accounting software or billing software to do e-invoice, you need to make sure your version is up to date 
and follow our HDN requirements. In another words, please sign maintenance with your dealer. Imagine you purchase the e invoice module. Then the next day, HDN update the structure and your software need to update because you don't have the maintenance with your dealer. So you are not able to update your software. Your e invoice will not work. So that's why you need to have the maintenance. Your software can be updated regularly according to LHDN requirements. This is same as GST era where accounting software maintenance or billing software maintenance is compulsory. Basically, this is the 51 fields that required in an e-invoice. For SQL accounting software, you can contact me. Please comment, like, and share this video. Your sharing will help a lot of people. For the next video, we are going into B2C. Some of your customer may not require an e-invoice. How to handle is by using consolidated e-invoice. That's all for today. See you in the next video. Thank you.